All right. So if you want to create a landscape material that can blend based on the height map, tiles, and you can create it in five minutes, you're in the right place. Per usual, please like and subscribe. If you aren't a member already, please consider becoming one because your help is huge. Thank you to everyone who's up on the screen right now. And with that, let's get into it. Okay, so now we are inside Unreal Engine 5.6. This will be beginner friendly. So if you're new to Unreal, I will be teaching this step by step. Right here, I just have a basic level setup with the landscape and some lighting. And beyond that, I do have two textures that I grab from Fab. So if I click on Fab and go to Megascan Services, I have a Forest 4 texture and a Smooth Rock texture. This will work with any texture pack. I will say you just want to make sure it comes with displacement. If you're not sure what displacement is, let me go to Window, go to Fab. If you click on Quixel and Filter for Materials, all of these materials should have displacement, but if you're not sure, right under maps, it mentions the fact that it has a displacement map that comes with the texture. So just make sure it comes with that. Okay, so to create our landscape, you wanna hit Control Space, go to the Content folder, right click, hit Material, and then type M underscore Landscape Blended. And open it up. Now, we are going to be blending different landscapes together, which means there isn't much need for all the pins that come with this landscape. So for us, we can click on this landscape material and go over here to the left where it says use material attributes, click that, and it'll come down to a single pin. The next thing we want to do is grab our layer blend. So right click, type in landscape layer blend, and you should find landscape layer blend, click on that, and it'll be this node right here. Now you can click down on it to get an index and click it another time. So you can bring in two different textures into your layer. For the first part to this, you do want to name your layer. That way Unreal Engine knows to separate the two. So for me, I'm just going to name this top layer. And then this can be bottom layer. I do want to note that you can add as many layers to this as you want. So if you want two, three, four, you can keep adding more layers as you see fit. And then I'm just going to drag this into the material attributes pin. Now, the next thing we're going to need to do is emulate what we just saw with the landscape material and create a make material attributes. So right click and type make to get make material attributes. Now this is looking very similar to how this looked before we closed it down. Uh, that is because they basically are the same, but this is used for blended materials. So I'm going to click this pin back in and we are going to click on this, go to control C and control V to copy it and create two. Now we can bring in our textures. So I'm going to do control space, go over to fab services, all the way down to textures, grab these four, drag them in and then do the same thing with the other texture and grab them and drag them in. Now you can separate them. I'm going to separate them with Albedo, which is this top one, Normal, which is this blue one, ORM, which is this yellow one, and Displacement, which is the gray. And do the same here, just like this. Now to explain what these are, this top one is base color, which is, as you would guess, the base color of our material. So I will drag, drop that into base color. This is our normal map. This is what is going to give the most texture when it comes to contrast to our material and make it look the most alive. This will go into our normal right here. This is an ORM, which is a packed texture. It has a different texture in the red, green, and blue channels, and they correspond with the letters O, R, M. So R is O, G is R, and B is M. O stands for ambient occlusion, R stands for roughness, and metallic stands for blue, or <laughs> metallic uh, stands for, M, st M stands for metallic. So R is then going to go into ambient occlusion, G is then going to go into roughness and M or blue is going to go into metallic. I do want to note that when you see it yellow like this, it is most likely because there is no metallic texture. I'm always afraid to click buttons. There we go. 
and then displacement can go into displacement. Now do the exact same thing for the top one. Now we have both blended materials set up and I can easily just go plug each one in and get started. But there are so few changes I wanna make to make sure that I have full control over this material. The first one of that is tiling. So right now, if I just brought this into the landscape, I would never be able to adjust the tiling. If you're not sure what tiling it is, it is basically the repetition of the texture. The texture is just a little square and those squares will repeat again and again and again to create the full landscape. If you don't want those re repetitions to be obvious, the easiest way to do that is to adjust the tiling. So to do that, I'm going to right click, type in landscape, 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 error, error. All right, come on, landscape. and find landscape layer coordinates. After that, I'm gonna do an S click to get a parameter node. I will call this top tiling and then M click to get a multiply node. Now I can plug them both in and plug all of this in into all of the UV channels. And then make sure this is set to one. If you don't, you might think you set up your material wrong because nothing will pop up. Now that that is done, you can copy it, go down here, paste it, change the name. That way nothing ever gets confused with itself. So I'll name this bot and then again, plug it into all the UV channels. Okay, now we're nearly there. You're almost finished building it. The last thing is to go back to the landscape layer blend. And I wanna bring light to what you see right here, which is the blend type. Right now is based on weight, which is really how much of it is going to be in one area whereas we can also change this to height height is going to bring in displacement and make our landscapes much more realistic because they will actually kind of move and adjust based on how the material actually looks which is huge so to do that all you want to do is change the blend type to height for each now that that is done you have a new pin now that new pin is I hope you guessed it, just the height map or the displacement right here. So all you need to do is drag this and into the new pin and you are ready to go. Now, the last thing that we can do to really make this simple landscape material shine is to allow for it to adjust based on its gray, white, and black levels, which is going to help blend these two materials together much more nicely. To do that, all we need to do is right click Type in three point and you're going to get three point levels. Click on that, plug that in, and then have the displacement plug into this texture right here. And then all we need to do is create three parameters for the black, middle, and white. So I'm going to click, I'm going to name this bot underscore black, and then bot underscore mid or gray, and then S click and name this bot underscore white and plug all of these in. Now you can really click whatever starting um, numbers that you want here. I definitely don't suggest zero. In my case, I'm gonna go 0.5 all the way across, which tends to give some good results, but truthfully, you're gonna be adjusting this in the instance, which I'll explain later. So for right now, this was looking just fine. Now with this, I'm going to control C to copy, control C to, or control V to paste and bring the top displacement over as well and plug that in. And then hope you guessed it on this one. All you need to do is change the name so it doesn't get confused. So now this will just be top. and then top. Okay, now with that, you have just built your first landscape material. So now all you need to do is click apply, close it, open up your content browser and go find your material. Let's right click on it and create a material instance. This is basically a non-destructive way of adjusting our material once we've created it. Click on the material instance, click on the landscape, 
and then go over to landscape material, click this little arrow to add it. Once this happens, everything's going to turn black. Do not worry. All you need to do is go over to landscape. And once you're on landscape right now, I actually have these layers pop up, but I'm going to get rid of them real quick. You're going to see this little button right here, which says create layers from assigned materials. It is a very little button. Trust me, it's there. Click on that. And when you do, you're going to see your bottom and top layer pop up. Now, the next thing you need to do is just go over to this plus sign so we can get the, the information from each layer. Click on the weight blended layer, save it wherever you want. In my case, I'll just save it in the content folder to keep things quick. And then once you do that, the last thing here is to paint this onto our landscape to switch it from being black. So in my case, I'm just going to change the brush size all the way high and just paint all the way on. So now it is on my landscape. Now I can close this down and right away you can see that the texture is repeating quite heavily. Now we want to get a little closer to get an idea of the size, but I will say uh, the number one size that I usually go with is 0.2. So now you can actually open up your instance. I'm going to bring this to the side so you can kind of see both at the same time. And I'm going to turn on the bot tiling and the top tiling and switch both of these to 0.2, which is going to make it much larger and much easier to work with. So although the tiling is still there, when you're up close with your material or doing any cinematic scene, it's actually very hard to tell that the tiling is there, especially once you add in foliage and other items to kind of cover up the uh, grid lines. Now that that is done, the next thing we're going to want to do is actually enable displacement. So to do that, I can do control space. I can now click back on my material, go to this left hand corner right here and type in nanite. And I want to hit enable tessellation. And then I'll, if you want to keep it at four, just for the fun effect, you can. Four is way too much. In my case, I'm going to go with point, uh, one, no, point one two, and then click apply, close, click on the landscape itself. In my case, I've already set up the landscape. In your case, it won't do this immediately. You want to click on your landscape, go down to where it says enable uh, nanite, click that, and then click rebuild and your displacement should enable. Since this is Unreal Engine 5.6, you shouldn't have to actually go through in the notepad to actually enable it. It is now comes enabled out of the box, much easier and much, much more user-friendly, especially for a beginner. Now that we have created our landscape, the next thing we can do is go back over to landscape click on the bottom layer and paint that in as well. So we can kind of get an idea of how our blend works. So now I can paint it in. Let me bring this down. And we have, I can kind of tool strength, tool size down. I can, tool strength is very low. I can kind of paint it on, get some nice, there we go. So it looks nice and realistic. If you ever get these weird shadows, don't freak out. The weird shadows is just the fact that it hasn't built a new nanite yet. So if you actually go over here and click rebuild, the shadows will go away. And now you can kind of see how we have two different landscapes, both textures on our landscape at the same time. So now that we have painted uh, a piece of the landscape on, we can now also go into the instance to kind of adjust how we want these to blend, which is why I brought in the three point layers. So with all of, with everything enabled, you can adjust the black levels between the two or the gray levels between the two or the white levels between the two to kind of get them to adjust and kind of mesh a little more smoothly. So you're not getting as harsh of lines. This is going to help make it look a lot more realistic, especially when you're trying to build like any forest scenes or things like that, which is why this is a really good and handy thing to add in. So hope this was helpful. This is an easy five minute landscape. It will generate a lot of very realistic results. And in most cases is really all you need to build for your cinematic or your level. So I hope this tutorial was helpful. Please like and subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next one.